I often help people who are relocating from far away places, sometimes places that have left them woefully unprepared for our cold winter weather here in the Iowa City area. If that's you and you're feeling just a little bit worried about what you need to do and get to survive winter here in Iowa, don't worry, I've got you covered. Consider this your snow school. Okay, so cold weather is just a fact of life here. There's no point in being miserable about it. Perhaps you've heard the saying, there's no such thing as bad weather, just bad clothing. Mm. Okay, I think that's Norwegian. The point of this saying is not to irritate you like your mom is nagging at you as you're trying to leave the house, but rather help you be comfortable and safe so that you can go outside and enjoy your everyday life. I'm gonna cover what clothing and what you need around the house and in the car to make it out the other side to April. The first few snows of the season can just feel so magical and otherworldly, especially when you're enjoying it from inside your cozy home. The world is blanketed in a layer of sparkling white. It's silent and mysterious, a bit like you've just dropped into a fairy tale. Sooner or later though, you have to go out into it. Everybody has their own opinion on what counts as cold, but for the sake of you, my warm weather friends, I'm going to count it as cold when the weather dips down into the 30s. And I'm talking Fahrenheit here, so that means zero degrees Celsius. It starts to do that overnight here in late October, and by November, it's not really that unusual to have daytime temperatures in the 30s, sometimes even colder. Typically, the coldest month of the year is January, and during that month, it is not unusual to encounter temperatures below zero degrees Fahrenheit. One other thing I want to mention about temperature is wind chill. Iowa is a windy state, so you'll often hear a forecast that says something like, the temperature is 20 degrees with a wind chill of eight. Wind chill is a term that's used to describe what the air temperature feels like to the human skin due to the combination of cold temperatures and winds blowing on your exposed skin. The colder the air temperature and the higher the wind speeds, the colder it's going to feel on your skin when you're outside. Okay, let's start with clothing first. Obviously, the goal is for you not to be freezing cold, but did you know that your biggest enemy is actually moisture? If you're going to be out in the cold for an extended period, use a layering approach with your clothes and start with a close fitting layer, a base layer, like a thin pair of long johns or tights. Do not wear cotton next to your skin because it holds on to moisture. Choose something synthetic or finely knit wool that's gonna pull moisture away from your skin. The same for your socks. Choose a pair that wicks away moisture and is warm, like merino wool or smart wool. Your second layer is for insulating, so look for something that will hold pockets of warmth against your body, like a fleece or a sweater. Your third layer is to block the wind and be waterproof. This is going to be your coat. Blocking the wind and keeping dry is going to be what makes or breaks you, makes you happy or makes you miserable. But don't forget your legs. If you're outside for a while or it's very, very cold, you're probably gonna want a base layer on your legs too, and possibly snow pants if you really hate feeling cold. When you're out there shopping for a coat, just be prepared to spend a little bit of money. This is not the item to skimp out on, but you also don't need to feel like you're gonna have to sell a kidney or a leg in order to afford it. You do not have to own a Canada goose jacket here to make it through winter. I recommend going to a sporting goods store where the focus is more on the, the technical features of the coat rather than say a fashion store where the focus is more about what it looks like. If you buy from a store that focuses on outdoor gear, you can often find temperature ratings on the garment tag to help you gauge if it would be a good fit for the weather here and for how warm you want to feel. There's three different terms and they can be a little bit confusing. Jacket, coat, and parka. A jacket is lighter weight and it typically stops at your waist. It often doesn't have a hood. A coat is warmer and it comes in a variety of lengths, while a parka is the warmest and it extends from over your rear end to possibly down below your knees, and it almost always has a hood. In my opinion, having your rear end covered up makes all the difference in staying warm, and it's also gonna make cold car rides more enjoyable when you have to sit down on that cold 
seat. Don't forget your extremities. Frostbite is the most common on your fingers, toes, nose, ears, cheek, and chin. Cover your head with a hat so that your ears are covered. If you're unwilling to mess up your hair, get earmuffs. Wear gloves or mittens. Mittens are always going to be warmer because your fingers will be together. You're also gonna want a pair of boots that are insulated and waterproof. If you plan to be out playing in the snow or shoveling, watch the heel height on your boots. You don't wanna fall and break your ankle in the winter and then have to have crutches. There are winter boots that lean more towards fashion and there are winter boots that are meant for business. Don't get me wrong, I love myself some nice looking shoes, but these kind of boots are not really interchangeable. If your fingers and toes are always freezing, you can buy these little chemical warming packets that you scrunch up and you stick them in your mittens or your boots or your pockets and they help you stay warm. For your car, you're gonna need an ice scraper and a snow brush to clear your windows. You don't wanna to try to drive around with just these little holes scraped in the frost. Swap out your windshield fluid for winter fluid so it doesn't freeze in your car lines and take a look at your tire treads. If they've seen better days, you may wanna buy new tires that are rated for all seasons. Sometimes people get snow tires that have little metal studs on the tire and they put those on during the winter, but that does require you to have two sets of tires for your vehicle, which can be a pain to store. In Iowa, studded snow tires are legal from November 1st to April 1st. Falling under the adage of better safe than starry, your mother would also like you to keep a blanket, hat, mittens, and a few non-perishable snacks in the car in case something terrible happens and you're stuck outside for longer than you would like. For your house, the basics are a snow shovel and a bag of salt or ice melt. A lot of people also have snow blowers, but that's an expense and you're gonna wanna weigh your ability and desire to shovel snow against the amount of space you have to clear. Here in Iowa City, you are required to clear the snow and ice from your sidewalks within 24 hours of a one inch accumulation or the city can cite and fine you. Do not wait to clear your sidewalks and driveway because once people drive on it or walk all over it, that snow is gonna get smashed down and it's gonna become really hard to remove. Once when my husband and I were newly married and living in our first house, there was this big snowstorm in early November and it dumped a ton of snow. We did shovel the sidewalks, but we did not shovel the walkway from our garage to the house because we figured it would warm up and it would melt. <laughs> it never did. And we ended up with this absolutely treacherous walkway, basically an iceberg on our back porch from November until March. If you have icy patches, you can sprinkle some salt on them to help break that ice apart and provide traction for people who might be walking on it. But don't act like a maniac with that salt though. It's pretty hard on your pavement. If you are living in a new house, do not put ice melt on your concrete for at least a year. You're gonna to wanna to use sand for traction instead. Inside your house, if your windows are drafty, you can put up window plastic, or you can use heavy drapes to keep those drafts out. For other drafts you find in your house, like under the door, get a door snake. Make sure you don't have your furniture covering up your floor registers. And if you have rooms or spaces that you, you don't use very much, you can partially shut down those vents to push the heat into your more occupied spaces. Don't wait too long to buy your cold weather gear and equipment or your choices are gonna be very picked over. Stores around here usually start putting this stuff out in September, but by the time January rolls around and you really want it, you're gonna be out of luck. If you're interested in more content all about the greater Iowa City area and real estate, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell down below. If you wanna to talk to me about buying, selling, or relocating here, you can find all my contact information in the description box down below this video. If you're watching on your phone, just tap the title of the video and it's gonna open right up for you. Hey, it's been fun and I'll catch you later.